Welcome back, Wargamers. We've got another edition of Budget Wargamer, and today we're going to talk about the Adeptus Custodes Vertus Praetors. So these guys right here are the new jet bike unit, the fast attack choice if you're playing Adeptus Custodes or Adeptus Custodes, depending on what you call them. And it's also the only way to get a shield captain on Veritas Praetor or on Dawn Eagle Jet Bikes. So these are called Dawn Eagle Jet Bikes and the unit's called Veritas Praetor. So let's take a look at the back there. Now what's interesting is that they're gonna come with your choice of either a, um, a bike base, which does tend to look a little bit better, but requires modification of drilling into it or, or whatnot to get the flight stand in there. Or you can do the clear acrylic flight stands if you prefer to not base your jet bikes, since after all they are flying around, so it's really your choice. Um, one of my current griefs about it, although I haven't put them together, we're gonna put one together in this video, is that I don't feel like the shield captain is really dynamic enough as a model to stand out as the leader of an army, but um, he's definitely no Trajan Valoris when it comes to his his visual presence on the battlefield. But stat line wise, this guy's a knockout, making this, this box quite hard to find because it seems like so many people are bringing in small detachments of Adeptus Custodes just to be able to bring in this fast moving, hard hitting shield captain on Don Eagle jet bike. Let's take a look at the rules because this will give you guys a sense of what the heck's going on with them too. So barring the assembly instructions, which we will walk through here momentarily. Let's get to the rules at the back. So, all right. This is for, this is in English. This is for the standard unit. So we're looking at a 14 inch move, two plus weapon skill, two plus ballistic skill, which is standard for the Adeptus Custode. Strength five, but they get toughness six. So just like most bikes, they're gonna get upped in toughness. Four wounds, four attacks, nine leadership, and a two plus save. Not to mention that in a battle-forged army, these guys are gonna be able to take Aegis of the Emperor and bump that up from a normal five plus. In a battle-forged list, it becomes a four plus invulnerable. So they're two plus normal save, four plus invulnerable save, which is just absolutely insane. And then they have a choice. So this is really one of your anti-air units in the, in the army, pretty much your only choice. But default, they come with a Hurricane Bolter. So that's got Rapid Fire 6, 24 inch range, Strength 4, no AP, and one damage. That's probably the way to build them out. But if you see the use for a Salvo Launcher to have either melt -a missiles or Flak Burst Launchers, there are ways that it can um, heavily, heavily damage um, vehicles and flyers in particular. So now their melee weapon is the Interceptor Lance. It has a special rule on the turn in which you charge, but you do get the plus one strength, minus three AP, and D3 damage on all subsequent turns. So even though it does have a special ability here to the side that says you can reroll failed wound rolls for the weapon on a turn in which its bearer made a successful charge. You pair that with the fact that you get a Shield Captain on Don Eagle Jet Bike that we're about to go over, and these guys become like almost impossible to miss a wound with, and enough AP to knock people, you know, back on their on their flats. So, and then you also get you know insult to injury the Misericordia, meaning that you get that extra one attack swipe at them. So, war gear, war gear options you can take a Salvo Launcher or Hurricane Bolter, and that'll ring true even for the Shield Captain. So you could have a Shield Captain that hits on two plus with a missile launcher, which is quite interesting. Then they get implacable, implacable, implacable Vanguard, however you pronounce that, where when they advance, you just get six inches added to your movement. No need to roll a D6 there. Oh, special rules, they're Biker, Fly, Veritas Praetor, and they are Adeptus Custodes. So here is the beat stick of the entire army. Probably debatably better than having Trajan Valoris in your army, and also he's a generic character, so you could take two of them. The preferred relic, it seems, which is unique to Dawn Eagle Jet Bikes, is the Auric Achilles, and that just means Golden Eagle. So if you're curious, Auric meaning golden, gold, and then Achilles just being a reference to Eagle. So if you give that to them, the Auric Achilles in, um, gives a couple of bonuses, but the primary being a three plus invulnerable save to the shield captain on Don Eagle jet bike, which is insane. So you have a two plus normal armor save, three plus invulnerable save, 
and then it, it, it provides other bonuses too, but here's the stat line, shield captain on Don Eagle jet bike, 14 inch move, two plus, two plus, strength of five, toughness six, but you got seven wounds and five attacks, so that's just insane. You, you're gonna get the same exact equipment as the rest of the dudes, would, even including the missile launcher, which is great if you want it. I, I'd probably just take the hurricane bolter for the volume of fire, because this is not, this is not a volume of fire army, and this is a unit that, you know, kind of, in, in a way, has some. So, you have the Aegis of the Emperor, which would normally give you the 5 plus invulnerable save. Um, Battle Forge, of course, would move you to a 4 plus. Inspirational Fighter means you can re make re-rolls of any hit rolls of 1, which pretty much means a miss, because since you're hitting on 2 pluses, of any Adeptus Custodes within 6 inches, that's normal for a Shield Captain. And then you have the same impl Implacable Vanguard. So, you bubble this guy in with the fact that you can end up re-rolling all ones, basically all misses to hit, and then you reroll failed wounds, which at strength six, you're probably going to be wounding a lot of stuff on threes anyways, so you're going to be rerolling the ones and twos, meaning that you're effectively going to hit somewhere around a two plus, or wound everything effectively around a two plus, and there will be some people that you will wound on a two plus. So let's go ahead, take a look at the model kit. We're getting through constructing this Custodes army. There's still a few things left to build, mainly because I overordered the um, custodian guards initially before I knew that all these types of models were coming out. But oh well, no regrets. All right, so we're going to be looking for parts number nine, ten, eight, and one. What a strange pairing! Eight. All right. So these. They're pretty much each on their own individual sprue, but they are all three different from what I've heard. I didn't do quite a comparison, but I guess we could take a look at them. We'll do them some justice. Not really. Slow-mo. Yeah, a lot of bits on here. Got a lot of bits. All right, so we're gonna clip off part number Eight, and I'll try to do this in view for you guys. I tend to bring things a lot closer to my body and the, the way I got the camera mounted up on the hobby desk, it's got it a little bit further away than what I prefer for my natural arms reach. So there we are. That was part number eight. Now we're looking for part number one. I have noticed some misnumberings lately in the kit, so not this one in particular. I haven't noticed any yet since I'm only on pretty much step one, but in some of the other kits, I think it was the uh, Alaris Custodians, the Terminators, that they had some misnumbered pieces on the instructions, so. Drive you a little bit nuts when stuff like that happens. All right, now we're using our, our uh, Citadel side cutters. I highly recommend these versus most you'll find at the hobby store. Also, we're working with plastic, so we got the Citadel plastic glue. That's the way to glue plastic together if you don't want to be putting it back together later. This, this thing is, um, you could almost say it, it pretty much guarantees your models will never come apart. Still break though, but usually break in places where they're not glued, to be honest. All right, so we put our little plumbing line as recommended. in the instructions. Pinch that together. We're only gonna build one of these, so. That one's that. Now we gotta get part number nine and 10 out of here. This is to build the hurricane bolter for one of the sides. You could build the salvo launchers. Salvo launcher bits are right there. We're going over here for the Hurricane Bolter. All right. Now we need part number nine. Could be possible that that's not even on this sprue, but nope, there it is, all right. But I was assuming that because there are three sprues that they were gonna each be on their own sprue, but that, 
could actually lead you to some false assumptions as it's becoming less and less normal these days with some of these hobby kits. All right, so it says we need to put a little bit of glue right into the fold. And then these guys get tucked down. Let's double check how we got to, there we go. So come on to the inside Verify that your hurricane bolter is seated in there properly. All right, and now that's going to get mated onto, oddly enough, it's gonna get mated onto the front, kind of like that. So if you, you'll see there's a weird connection. So we're gonna go and put a little bit of glue where I believe most of it fit from the test fit. Even a little bit there where it touched. Okay. Already off the bat, these do seem to be a little bit of a complex model, but don't let that fool you because the way that these guys should perform on the battlefield in theory should make it all worthwhile. But we're essentially this far. We got one more side of the front fairing to do. It's saying to grab part number five and part number six. So let's go to into that. So part number five we've got right here. It's kind of like the bottom ridge of the front of the bike. Like a chest bone of some sort. Number six is part of this eagle. One rule about custodes before you get involved in them, if you're looking at getting involved, is gotta love gold. Rule number two is you gotta love eagles. These guys were the uh, personal bodyguards of the emperor, so there were no excuses if you didn't like gold. All right. So if you guys are building your own armies out there, what I'd like to see is some suggestions from you all about what's in your list. So I've got way too many models and, and I, I can't just go and play everything that I have. I have to actually be a little bit more selective about that. Because I, I didn't buy the army um, to be competitive, right? I don't, I don't think this is the army, I don't think this is the right army for you if that's your end goal. You're just, it's gonna to be too tactical for most, most gamers. It's actually probably more of a pro gamer army. I don't consider myself to be a competitive gamer in 40K, so um, that's not my thing. I'm a hobbyist, I build, I paint. Don't have much of a personal life. But the, uh, to, in, in other words, of like getting out to game and stuff like that. But I like putting stuff together. So I bought, I bought what looked good. And I bought at least one of everything, so I've got enough variety to get out there. But I've got um, a lot of custodian guards, like 35 of them, because I was planning on building out just an army of those, since in the 7th edition that was all you could make an army of. It was a bit ridiculous. But I'm like totally stoked. They've got Alaris Terminators, they got jet bikes. Like I don't have to go and shell out massive amounts of money to get the Forge World jet bikes, but I had considered maybe getting a Forge World jet bike, one of them, because they sell them individually, but getting one of them to put the um, Shield Captain on Dawn Eagle jet bike, but but it got me thinking, it's like, you know, I could do Trajan Valoris if I like, if I want to do named characters. Some people don't like doing named characters, and I generally don't. I used to despise it, mainly because of what it did in Warhammer Fantasy back in the, uh, the old Bretonians edition. But nowadays, I don't know, I feel like they've given a lot of special characters more of a vanilla a appeal. They're not as broken. They're not one-man armies like they used to be. Although, I think some people are starting to have some of the pretense that maybe these shield captains on Don Eagle jet bike are like a one-man unit. 
they're definitely a wrecking ball. So, on the stat line at least. And for the points of what you get, I tell you, the points, about 170 points, something like that, and you're getting the relic for free. Um, the the Auric Achilles is definitely the way to go. But the, uh, yeah, for the points that you're paying in an army like this, for the character, they're like giving away the characters by comparison because that's at least how it feels to me. I know it doesn't really feel like that by the time you build out a list, but it's like, why not have two of these guys? You're buying a box. If it's your primary force, right? And I understand if it's, if it's an att a detachment, you're not going to. It's almost like, why not have two of these dudes, <laughs> shield captains? They can't join units anyways, so may as well dump on somebody and uh, blast straight into them. So, at least you'd get one heck of the use out of, out of that one box that you've got. So, all right. We're making a lot of progress. We're not ready to put the lid on the front yet, so definitely stick to the instructions. I assume there's a reason they've told us not to at this point. So we need 17, part number 17. Here we go. It's gonna be one of the front little wing dings. Okay. Now you gotta pay attention to what direction they're facing. These um, might be facing a different direction than what you were presuming, but they're gonna fit these ones are gonna fit right here onto that little piece. So right there, top, bottom. So I would put the glue onto the part you're gonna put on the bike, rather than putting it onto the bike first. Cause you're gonna need a little bit of extra glue on part of that. Not the whole thing, cause the back part of it won't touch the bike, so. That's one of the best things about plastic glue. Even though it can still fall off right now, it's still um, moist, whatever you wanna call it, what a weird word, that it gets tacky fast because it chemically starts to change that plastic. Now for the sake of the focus of the camera, let's go ahead and move those sort of out of the way. Some of these bits don't need to be here. All right, let's work front and center. Should have thought of that sooner. All right, now we got part number 14 we're looking for. All right, this is, looks like a foot peg. Could be wrong, but I think it's a foot peg for the biker to put his feet up. So it's like he's flying first class. He's got that wide glide Harley, whatever you call it. All right, let's definitely go in for a test fit on this one because I got no clues. Oh, okay. So before it gets too confusing, here's how it's gonna to go together. Like that. Wow, weird, all right. So here's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna glue right there. And a couple dots where it's gonna to touch. There we go. All right. So comment, let me know if you've already got these guys. Like, are you just following along for the commentary and, and for you know, the self-fulfillment of watching somebody else put some models together? Or are you actually genuinely curious about like building your own army or adding this unit to your list but wanted to see what's, what's involved before you bite the bullet and uh, purchase the unit? I'd just like to see in the comments. There's, there's not a lot of comments at this point. There, uh, Few and far between, but I'd like to invite conversation in for you guys. And then I've got a couple cameras, and I've done a couple like a couple videos with my face on a web in a webcam. But ever since I got this Canon, I have to figure out how to port the video into OBS and do it live. So I've been recording these um, on the camera using Remote Shoot on the computer, and then plugging it in and post-processing it later. It's a little bit different than what I was doing prior, but it's still a pretty efficient way of doing it because it's not like I wasn't doing any live streams. I feel like I'm too small of a channel to oh, hit the camera, um, hit the microphone actually, attach the camera. 
I haven't done any live streams yet because I feel like I'm too small of a channel really to justify that, but that could actually be a wrong assumption, I wonder. You know, I'm, I'm actively looking to grow my channel. So I've been like studying up on uh, best practices, I guess you'd say. And also some of the um, the people I got mad respect for out there in the hobby world and YouTube in general. And it's a bit of a learning curve. Like there's still a lot of stuff I got to start working on. Not, not just from my knowledge standpoint on the hobby, because I'm more of a casual hobbyist, but mainly from like, man, there is a formula to what you got to do to be successful on this YouTube platform. And believe it or not, I've been successful on one of my other channels, totally unrelated to wargaming on YouTube. M massive success. But um, part of that could be like dumb luck or like striking gold, striking oil, whatever you want to call it. Hang on here, speaking of gold, let's get back to these custodians. We gotta find out where this sword even fits. There, oh, I felt it. What a weird placement for these things. That looks like something you're gonna lose on the highway. Huh. Huh. All right. feel so great about doing this, but there it is. That looks like an afterthought placement, if anything. Like, oh shoot, we forgot to get a place to put that Misericordia. <laughs> You're right, let's put it right there. Good idea. All right, and then here's another conundrum. So, we're talking about a jet bike, right? So, part number 20, about to clip this bad boy off the sprue. Do you call them sprues or frames? I call them sprues. I think that's at least the Word Games Workshop uses for them. But let's take a look at part number 20. Don't worry, this is part number 21. I presume it's part number 21 goes on the other side too. It's got exhaust. But it's a jet bike, so it's going to have a jet turbine here. I'm starting to wonder if the people who designed this model don't really know how jets work in relation to exhaust, but could be another reason it's got it. I don't know. Maybe in the, 40, the 41st millennium, things work different. Okay, I'm gonna need to do a better job lining this up. There's a little dimple. There we go. There we go. I didn't want the plastic glue to start locking up on us. Ooh, so you gotta put that misericordia in first, definitely before the exhaust. It's like san sandwiched, pancaked in there, whatever you wanna call it. I'm adding an extra drop of glue for strength there. Forget about winning a Golden Demon. This is a, a gaming model. <laughs> 16, all right, we're getting the the dorsal fin, I think it's called, right? So we've done the pectoral fins, now we're gonna do the dorsal fin. I'm gonna put this dork on there. Well, I think dork is a anatomical term for something related to whales, either that or I believe that due to what could be an urban legend, all right. So the glue goes in it. Guess that's not supposed to sit flush. There we are. So we got that side of the bike all decked out. I would venture to say that maybe we're gonna start doing the other side of the bike. Oh, now it's time to put part number 12 on there. I feel like that could have been done a lot sooner. Might be a reason why we didn't, but I'm not seeing it yet. This is like the hood. No, not that hood. It's like the hood of a car. All right, so 
This must be where like the nuclear reactor sits that this thing flies on that somehow needs highway pipes like a Harley Davidson. It says to apply glue on the back, the flat pieces, and then up here into that. And that's all it says to put glue on. So I feel like I should have test fit this first. Definitely feel like I should have test fit that first. Didn't quite feel right. Being that this is my first one, this is this like a, a raw unboxing and haven't built a set of these beforehand so I look smarter or anything like that. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's on there though. Whatever. All right. That was my motorboat noise. All right, so we got that on, that on. Now we're gonna put those jet thrusters on the back. This is part of how they get 14 inch base movement. Oh, there we go, didn't recognize it. Had to flip the sprue over. I wasn't looking for the number like I should have. I was looking for the actual jet shape. Yeah, so back to like the advice I was seeing of what to do for YouTube. It was like to grow a personal connection with your audience, things like that. Things I definitely want to do, but I don't have a lot of interaction in the comments and stuff like that. So I followed back some of the people who follow me. I'll do that for you. But I've left comments on their videos. A lot of you guys are hobbyists, right? Some of you guys have different videos, different... Um, Theme. Some of you guys aren't even into videos, so you don't have any channel to follow, but that's cool too. You might be sitting sidelines waiting for your time to, you know, jump in. Maybe I'll inspire somebody to do their own channel someday. I know I certainly have with my other topics that I discussed, but not this topic. All right, so now we need 23 and 14. So we're working back to front this time. Oh, this is a misnumbering. So it looks like what they meant by 14 is they mean 15. Because I believe 14 was the front pegs or something else. Now you want that piece. We part number 23. Okay, that was labeled correctly. Ooh, these videos get long, man. This one's taking me half an hour to build. Complicated. Do you like building vehicles? Like, if that's your thing. I feel like some people really like vehicles because it feels more like a model kit to them. Whereas putting together the soldiers is just a weird experience. You know, if you're used to putting together like war model or, um, Planes and tanks, things like that. But for me, I'm more like, oh, just give me the dudes. But then again, when it comes time to painting, I don't know, I guess I don't know what kind I prefer. I paint a lot more dudes, as is necessary in wargaming. Vehicles can be tricky. Sometimes that the large amount of flat open spaces can be awfully hard to paint and not just look dull, right? I mean, you can't just dry brush a whole vehicle very easily if that's your technique. That technique just doesn't really work. I think that's definitely where airbrushing comes in. And I've developed a rattle can technique for when I can find um, good base colors, highlight colors, things like that through a rattle can series. That's certainly a lot easier to do on historical vehicles when we have these um, Rust-Oleum and Krylon camouflage paint series. So way harder to do on a War Games model that is fantasy driven like this. This is sci-fi of course, but it's still fantasy. A lot of bright regalia, not a lot of camouflage. It's not a lot of effective um, 
Yeah, I guess camouflage, right? Like, all right, so we're gonna, again, just a reminder for what we did on the front. We're gonna put the